I think all of you know us, but we are Bill and Linda Harper. And, <laughs> and we're still newly, newlyweds. Almost, well, three and a half months, two and a half months. I, I'm so happy I just lost count of it. <laughs> we're going to read in a few. Uh, are able, if you'll stand for the reading of the word, we're reading from Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Hear, O sons, a father's instruction, and be attentive that you may gain strength. For I give you good precepts. Do not forsake my teaching. When I was a son with my father, tender, the only one in the in the sight of my mother, he taught me and said to me, let your heart hold fast my words, keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get insight, do not forget and do not turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will keep you. Love her and she will guard you. The beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom and whatever you get, get insight. Prize her highly, and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. She will place on your head a graceful garland. She will bestow on you a beautiful crown. You may be seated. Well, would you welcome uh, some amazing folks that are going to speak the word today. So we've got uh, Bob Fraley, Pastor Bob, Norbert, Tina, and... Uh, they are, we're going to, we just get to have fireside chat style, so um, we're, we're looking forward today. If you're online, all the more that you get to, get to connect, and all right, we'll let you guys grab these seats. And... Beautiful. You want that one, Pastor Bob? Okay. Well, that was the shortest one. You made Mr. Fraley walk further. Why is that? Well, he knew I needed the extra shot. <laughs> so good. Well, so do you guys want to take a second just to introduce yourself real quick and maybe maybe give them a little 60 second bio of of uh you're just there's so much story. There's yeah, so much is, so I know you're trying to trim so it down much. but make sure everyone connects. I know many of us are already familiar. But. Hi. Yeah. My name is Tina Semflevin. This is my husband Norbert. Uh for for those of you that may remember uh Judson Cornwall I am his youngest daughter, and uh, very, very happy to be here. We moved to Phoenix almost 30 years ago. We came here, and we haven't left. Yeah. So that's, that's my story. Tell me how many kids, grandkids. Oh, too. we have, okay. oh my goodness, we have four children. We have six grandchildren, and our second son is getting married this Saturday in this sanctuary. Next week. Yes. We're very Been happy about that. <laughs> waiting for that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good, good, good. Nor, you want to give a little of your, some of your story, yeah. Norbert, Norbert Senftleven. Can you hear me well? Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, uh, as you can tell, I have an accent. I wasn't born here. What brought me here was the American dream, and the American dream wore a skirt. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> and uh, so I'm, I'm an architect, and uh, I, my last job until I retire was the to be resident architect at Sky Harbor and where I conducted a Bible study for the employees. And, uh, and it is a privilege for me to be here. It's awesome. Norbert, you're amazing. How many languages? Tell them, go ahead, I get to ask that. Uh, I just speak only five, the five easiest ones, all of them with an accent, so <laughs> I can be excused. Which, which languages? English, well, sort of, but. Yeah, English. <laughs> Yeah, of course, Argentina has Spanish. Uh, my father was born in Berlin, Germany, so I speak German, Spanish, German. Uh, I was in the military. I had to study French, so I speak French. English I learned from some uh, Br British immigrants that were in Argentina. <laughs> really? And uh, Italian, because in Argentina, we have the largest Italian population in the world. Interesting. Interesting. More... The only place that has more Italians is Italy. Okay. Do you think they're all in Chicago, New Jersey? No. Oh. They're yeah, in I was going to say, I was Chicago. I would have. No, oh. they're, they're all there. So I learned it from hearing it, and me piace molto parlare italiano. Yeah. <laughs> ah. 
I'm just kind of soaking it in, guys. Like, I'm just, sorry, I'm just feeling all this wisdom. I'm just, just feeling it. Thank you. You're sitting next to me, so I especially it's powerful among you. Mm-hmm. You want to introduce yourself, or you want me to talk about you? I can't talk. <laughs> so we, I should have checked on that. By the way, when we, I, I announced the name of this, we're going to say we're going to do sitting with the sages. Norbert made very clear that Tina was going to be Rosemary. <laughs> yeah, so it's good. So, introduce yourself, sir. All right, so. I'm Bob Fraley. I've lived here a little over 50 years. Uh, we have 94 children in our family now. How many? 94. Nine. Yeah, and, and they beat me up all the time. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd, <laughs> I'd be out better. Uh, you don't take them out to dinner too often, do you? All 94. Well, if I do, I, I write it off to the church. Okay. <laughs> this is the blessings of the Lord. Right. So, yes. and for some of you, you may not know, we took a family of six children whose parents were killed. So those as well as, and then our own three. But they're getting older. I'm getting older. And now we have 94. And actually, I think we have maybe 95. Just don't ask me their date, their birthdays. Yeah. <clears throat> But the Lord's been very good to us. We moved out here <clears throat> at the directions of the Lord and have been involved in a lot of different ministries, a lot of different issues. I was a businessman. Uh, the Lord has been very good in the business uh, aspect. And all I can say is that uh, you learn a lot. A lot of, lot of things come up. And the thing you learn the most is the one thing that counts Take it to the Lord, Amen. because that's wisdom. To me, wisdom. That's what, that's where the wisdom is. Yeah. Otherwise, Amen. you make mistakes. <clears throat> you learn from your mistakes, but the biggest thing that you learn is take it to the Lord in prayer. You know, I'm, can I say something sure. real quick? Yeah. Cool. You know, in Luke, it talks about the enemy says Satan was tempting Jesus, and when he tempted him, Jesus would always answer with quoting scripture. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we don't have the mind that Jesus did, so we don't, we're not going to always know the scripture. We may repeat when something of the enemy comes at us. But the one thing he did give us, and that is prayer. And you learn as you get older, basically any decision you make, and that's probably why Paul said pray without ceasing, you take it to the Lord in prayer because it works. Yeah. We have prayed for over a year on certain issues before we got an answer. So you don't give up. You just stay with it. Amen. Anyway, thank you. Good. Adam, get us started. Pastor Bob, what a blessing you are, sir. Thank you for sharing this time with us here. You've done a few of these with me. So I've done a few of you'd them. Think I would, uh, you'd think I'd know how to behave by now, but <laughs> I don't trust it. So. Well, uh, let me say one thing. He doesn't behave because he just hasn't learned from us old folks yet. Yes, yeah, that's why I'm, that's why I'm sitting. <laughs> Bob Burgett, and uh, I retired from 40 years of pulpit ministry and was invited by pastor here to come down and be the mission pastor. I retired the second time when I was 80 years old, and uh, after a run through London with uh, Pastor Chris, uh, I decided that he he just couldn't keep up with me, so... I decided to to, to retire. It's been a privilege to be a part of this congregation for these number of years. It came down in 1996. Been blessed, and I want everyone here to know that you are a great community of believers. And I just pray God's blessing upon you. Yeah, thank you, Bob. I've got a few children, three. Then I've got some grandchildren, and I've got some great-grandchildren. So I've got quite a family. Yeah, you do. My awesome. daughter's here with me, and which I'm happy for Yay, today. Yay, Linda. She's here. Awesome. Hi, right, man. Oh, the text that we read, uh, the dad and Linda read just earlier, uh, Proverbs 4. And my goodness, if uh, as you're looking to the new year, I, I, I so encourage you, uh, you know, as you pick your reading plans or whatever, I, I just encourage you, like Proverbs and Psalms should be kind of like just part of your daily diet. Like even if it's just one verse of Proverbs, but 
It's, it's the constant process of really what, what our theme is today. And in verse 4, there's this, this statement that, um, that the, uh, the sage is, 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 is providing from the Lord. I think we may have it up here. But one of the, one of the sentences is, let your, let your heart hold fast my words. Let your heart hold fast. And the, the context of that, as you'd heard, is this the, the sharing of wisdom. Um, so I just kind of toss it out there with you because it, it is two parts, isn't it? It's, it's not only um, the, the, the communicator of the wisdom, which we know comes from God, but then there's the receiving. Mm -hmm. um, you, you all sit here after decades with the Lord. Like, how is it, how have you held fast? Like, like and maybe Tina, we'll just start with you. How have you... you made it the posture of your heart uh, to continue to, to gain wisdom, even at these more mature more, okay. years, you know, <laughs> yes, mature. Actually, yeah. uh, being older, it's easier because I have more time. I'm retired, and uh, I can seek the Lord first thing in the morning, and that sets my day. It's wonderful. But you just, even as a young person, you need to realize that the center core of your being needs to drink from the Lord, needs to drink. You need to be watered with the word and with prayer. And like Pastor says, even if it's just one verse of the day that you meditate on, it will help you and you will grow and you will be healthy. It's very, very important. Yeah, yeah. And that's a, so there really is a posture of the heart piece, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and, Absolutely. Norbert, you, you talk a lot about the, the role of the heart in our life. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, the book of Proverbs has been quoted today. To me, you see, I grew up in Buenos Aires, Argentina. My son is school teacher, was the son of, a, of an Irish missionary. And uh, he used to say, guys, son is school. I was in my teens, says, guys, Le read the Proverbs every day. There's 31 chapters. You can read one chapter a day. In the days that, the months that don't have the 31 days, read it as dessert because it's about a virtuous woman mm -hmm. that I married one of the best. <laughs> so uh, the posture of the heart, to me, the Proverbs always speak to the heart and the the. Mm -hmm. Bible shows that the mind follows the heart. Yeah. And all over the Proverbs, you even have something like, the, the fool shall be a servant to the wise of heart. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is a matter of the heart. Some people think it's in the mind. No, we think of the things that matter to us. And when the word of God matters to us, that's when we really receive. But it all begins with the heart, because man looks at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Good. I, uh, so, I can jump in here, but I, I, I just speak to our, our students, and I say students, younger generation. Um, we, we have a, 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 a part of the SWC distinctive has been to embrace uh, the generations where we learn from each other. Um, young generation, uh, and and that's, that's anybody under the age, Pastor, can you, are you okay to announce your, you're in your 80s, right? Six and a half. 96 and a half. 96 and a half. And uh, so here's part of what anybody that is younger than 96 and a half can learn. Um, and, uh, and even if you're older, first of all, we'd like to meet you. Um, but, and I just say this all the time to Pastor Bob, you make, you make getting older look really, really good. Yes, and, do. uh, I yes, just, I thank you for that. So we're just, it's again, the posture of the heart, like that's so much of scripture is constantly just gleaning, like, like an anticipation. What am I going to learn? What am I going to learn? And then God gives us people. And that's why community, as much as this, like, well, well, I, I wish things were done more my way, my style. Here's what we get to embrace is this diversity is like really a good, good thing. Um, so, Mr. Fraley, I, we had a question from one of our students come in, and I, I thought this was, this is notable. How do you balance financial ambition 
is as a business person, because you really, most of your business career, you were serving the Lord, right? So it wasn't, yeah. Um, so how do you balance financial ambition? And the key word there was ambition. Because I, I think, I, I'm assuming the context of that was like, maybe ambition's not a good thing. You know, maybe it, it could get confused with greed or whatever. How do you balance uh, financial ambition in business with remaining faithful to God? And that was, that was from one of our, our younger students. You have well, thoughts for us? You know, I, I, I can't say that my experience, you go by your experience. And probably most of you here, because the Lord has blessed the businesses that I've been in, <clears throat> we never had any financial ambition. You're right when you say it's not a good word. Interesting. For us, it wasn't. Never even thought about it. <clears throat> we still don't think about it. Never thought about having any money, mm. really. Interesting. There was nothing that was even there to try to obtain. It evolved. Wow. By being obedient to what the Lord called us to do, it just evolved. And that may not sound too appropriate. I don't know. I but, don't think we're going to be able to sell books with that kind of, <laughs> that kind of wisdom. Well, the thing is... <laughs> What, so what, good. What, what, all I wow. can say is if, wow. if you're obedient and you pray about the issues as they come up and you give it over to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and the interesting thing about this is your expectations, I, I don't know how to necessarily address that because they're definitely people I know more spiritual than I am and all of that did not ever really have funds that were there for them constantly to do things that they would have liked to have had the funds for. And I can't tell you why. God, you, you know, it's, it's one of those things you don't really know. You follow the pattern that you feel like is the direction God wants you to know. You trust him. And some things turn out to be very well. Other things you learn from them because you make a mistake. So, but all I can say is if, if you talk to Barbara, that's my wife, and by the way, she can't be here. Barbara's not walked for over 20 years. Yeah. <clears throat> she has MS. Yeah. And she was one of these real high-energy gals, super athlete, everything. But it hit her, <clears throat> and she hasn't walked since. But it, was just, it just was, wasn't something that was even on our mind. We tried to have enough funds to pay our bills, and that was pretty much what it was. And things just evolved. They just happened. And funds came in and, in a big way. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, and, and, you know, that may not be what most people want to hear, but I, I, I got to only speak my experiences. And those experiences in that way really started when I was about 30. Up to that time, I was no different than anybody else. You think, you know, you got to do this, do that to be, yeah. able, to be able to be, be successful. Suc considered right. successful. Right, right. But uh, that's when the Lord called us to take those children and just like everything from that point on, I had a major encounter with the Lord and obedience became so important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's what we followed. And the core of it. Love it. Anyway. If I might add just yeah. one little thing. It's good. My father was a very, very generous man. He was forever helping somebody. Was. And yeah. yeah. And his frame of mind, which was true, was you can't beat God giving. The more you give, the more he gives back to you. <laughs> Amen. Pastor Bob, um, so you, you've had, so you referenced the 40 years, but it's, it's been far more than that. That was just your pulpit ministry, as you said. Um, so you've, you've seen people. Um, and as pastors, we especially, we're, we're shepherds. So you're, you're always watching over. So you've seen You've seen the generations. So have you seen a couple of generations come and go? I guess you've, you've outlived many of, uh, and you've seen, you've seen things evolve. Like, how do you, what do you, what do you think is different about today than, and the, and the challenges spiritually facing us today spiritually compared to what they were maybe 40, 50, 60 years ago? I mean, obviously it's different, but in, how do, you, how do you consider it? In my opinion, the pressure by media is mm -hmm. the greatest struggle that the young people have today. There is a constant battle to 
keep your frame of mind in the right way because of all the cultural changes that are thrown at you. Mm -hmm. And when you stop to put your life in order, the very first thing you have to do is make a decision. When I graduated from high school, for a couple of years, I did not find my way very well. I would attend church when I went home, and I'd walk around the neighborhood and try to find a church, and most of them, you were never invited back. Mm. And so for two years, I had a very difficult time, and then by the mercy of God, which was a personal miracle to me, God gripped my heart and led me to a congregation that was a congregation much like you have here that love people, mm -hmm. draw them in. And at that time, I realized two, three things. One, nobody was going to build a foundation for me spiritually. I had to do it. Mm -hmm. And so that meant I had to know scripture. I had to know how to pray. I had to know how to have faith and believe God no matter what took place. The second thing that I learned was that I needed someone to help me because I needed someone to, that I could go to and share and talk with and decide what God wanted me to do. The third thing and the most important is I learned not to judge my brother and sister. Mm -hmm. That's very difficult. Mm -hmm. But one of the things the Lord spoke to me was, they are struggling to walk just like you are. So those struggles that you have, they're having. Yeah. Oh. So pray for them rather than condemn them and talk against them. So with those three things as a basis, God began to deal with my life and began to lead me along. Mm -hmm. And it's been a great trip. <laughs> mm, that's good. So good. That's good. So good. Bob, mm. one thing that you... I might say is I've done a lot of research on Christianity. I've written several books, and that's why I've had to do it, and I've got a new one coming out. But the church has never, in the history of the church, and I'm talking about true Christianity, has had to experience what we're experiencing in our society. Yeah. Because there's never been a society that's had the means to be able to tempt all of us in the areas of the world like ours, or like ours does. It's constant, going on, going on, every day, every minute. And so that develops within us. It just means it really takes a lot of courage mm -hmm. uh, to stand and commitment to stand. And that's where we're at, folks, and that's what we have to do because we are representing the Father. And that's what he wants us to do. Um, the kingdom of God is who we are representing, not the world. Yeah. Don't, don't feel guilty if you do fall to the world at times because there's never been a time in the history of the church or of Christianity that is facing what we have to face every day. Yeah. And I can give you a lot of different issues. Obviously, the, the, as Pastor Bob mentioned, the media is one of the strongest and it's in front of us every day, constantly. Yeah. Yeah. And basically, it's presenting things of the world, and a lot of them are very attractive. But are they of the Father? Are they of God? That's what you've got to really be sensitive so to. I suppose what, what you we're hearing, um, it, it's why we have to take seriously the support of the next generation, not only in how we, um, how we accept them, but how we love them mm -hmm. and, and, and students. I, I, I understand that there's this cultural um, message that has been out there um, about the older generation. And one of, one of the messages that you hear a lot of is, is Pastor Bob, you just addressed it, is, is the older generation being judgmental mm -hmm. against the younger generation. Here's the deal. And, and, and congregation, the rest of the congregation helped me out with this. It is one of our main, our, one of our top commitments. We will not judge you. 
We will not sit right. in judgment on you. <clears throat> and Pastor um, so Bob Fraley just mentioned this. It's, it's, it's not our job to judge. It, it is to discern, and we can help you. Um, but you need to know these, we're here to love you. Yeah. And, and many, if you only knew what Pastor Bob was like when he was a young person. Oh my goodness. Linda, is that right? I mean, just a crazy man. So, so yeah, you have stories, but that's, that's uh, a commitment. I'm not crazy, not but crazy. I'll tell you what, let, let me give you this. Go ahead. You're going to give us some On example? our 50th wedding anniversary, okay. my brother was here, and they were allowing people to say some things, and he started to tell about when I was young. Wow. And my brothers and sisters got so mad at him because they told, he told how that I was stubborn, mm. hard-headed, mm. and afterwards he came to me and he said, I'm sorry, I just wanted to share how God had changed your life. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love that. That's exactly right. Like, because our younger generation doesn't get to hear that. All they get to see is like you and us, like the, the results of the maturity. So, yeah, you, you have anything else to add? Just on, I mean, you've seen the generations happen. Uh, come yeah, and go. I'm, I'm 15 years younger than Pastor Bob, and I'm counting as a spiritual father. <laughs> the Bible says that, you see, uh, 1 Corinthians 4.15 says, you may have many instructors in Christ, but not many fathers. Mm -hmm. It is mm -hmm. very important Hear to that. find father figures. Mm -hmm. And some things that happen when you have an eye on, of respect on the older generation than yours. To me, there are key moments, some things that you never forget because somehow the Holy Spirit fixes them in your heart mm -hmm. that you might may keep them. See, to me, and I hope Pastor Bob won't mind my saying this, but you see, I used to go with Pastor Bob to Mexico uh, as an interpreter 25 years ago, and we went just almost every other week, every other weekend, and uh, so we traveled and all that. And then on the way back, Pastor Jim Cornwell, my little wife's oh. uncle, <laughs> he would set us all together there, mm -hmm. and I says, "Okay, what have we learned?" from this trip, what are our experiences? What have we seen? And every one of us tried to say what we had observed, and some perhaps may have tried, myself perhaps, to show how sharp and observers we could be. <laughs> but then he left Pastor Bob for the last speaker, and Pastor Bob said, everything that is important has been said. And that was it. To me, <laughs> that humility mm -hmm. of heart yeah. was something that impacted my life. I don't remember what anyone else said, mm -hmm. myself yeah. included. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I'll never forget that I learned from Pastor Bob the quietness, the peace, the mm -hmm. humility. Yeah. You see, because you see, reading the Proverbs every day, you, when you see... Uh, chapter 11, verse 2, you'll see that with the humble is wisdom. Yeah. Mm. So whenever you see pride, you're going to see foolishness mm. if you read the Proverbs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Amen. Good. I mean, good. I, maybe, Tina, you just want to build on that. I, I, you know, as, a, as, a, as a, a mother, but also as a working professional yourself, but you've You've seen, and now grandkids. Do we have great grandkids yet? No, I don't, not no, yet. not yet. Not yet. So, um, yeah, you're way too young for that. Sorry. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and I robbed the cradle. The rosemary, let's be clear. Wait, wait a minute. Just some words of wisdom there. They came out very, very good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Miles. I'm learning. I'm learning. Um, you know, you've seen it evolve, how you raised your kids, you know, oh, against. Oh, yeah. I, I uh, applaud Pastor Bob down there. Uh, the world is crazy. And the media is just bombards you all the time, all the time. So my advice is turn it off. Don't oh. listen to oh, it. Oh, that's just, wait a second. Now, we, that's way complicated. I know. So what, you're talking like the power button? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, it's everywhere. But, but it my, my thinking is you actually can focus on what you want to focus. 
yeah, sure, it's going to drop in here and there, but you don't have to stay there. You can move Good, on. Yeah. And that's why it's so important, for instance, to read something in the morning, read a scripture. Even if, like, even if it's just one thought, go back to that thought. Go back to that thought. Go back to that thought. Because if you let that garbage in, it's, it's harder and harder to get it out. So stop it at the front end as much as you can. I know you can't always. But we do have a choice on what we think about. And if you're not thinking something good, okay, you say, well, you know, I can't, blah, blah. Okay, then think about who is controlling your thought life. Is it you? God gave us a will. He will not cross our will. He respects our will. He could, but he doesn't. So just be careful on what you dwell on. And, don't, and while I've got the mic, Please. <laughs> be so very, this, this is my new thing. Be very, very careful to not hold on to any kind of negative thinking. Do you, I, I hadn't realized, I'm a rather quiet person and, and very positive, very upbeat, always have been rather quiet. But negative thinking is poison. It will kill you. So don't let it take hold. What happens if you let negative thinking take hold? It seeps way down deep and it becomes resentment. And that's hard to get rid of. So just be aware. Be aware of your thought patterns and ask the Lord to help you. You can't do it on your own. Trying to get rid of negative thinking on your own is like a five-year-old wanting to drive daddy's car. It's just not going to work. It's not going to work well. You can't reach the pedals. You can't see over the top. So ask the Lord to help you. Ask the Holy Spirit. That's one reason that we have the Holy Spirit in us, is to help us realize what is negative and let it go. Lord, help me. Let it go. So good. Don't let it fester. Good That's word. Good word. <laughs> there's, there's one thing that you have to stop and realize, though, is that you are living in a world that is changing. Mm -hmm. It's changing all the time. And we have, at times, found the church fighting against change. Mm -hmm. And so we struggled with the telephone, we struggled with television, we struggled with radio, and sometimes we made ourselves appear to be against anything that was going forward as the world looked at it. Mm. There is a lot of danger in the way that media is today. But there is also benefits mm -hmm. from media. So when we begin to talk about these things, be careful lest you judge it so hard that you eliminate those that have a work in media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we need to pray that those that are working in media would become aware of the good that can come yeah. from it, Amen. but also recognize the evil that there is available yeah. when it's used wrongly. Yeah. Praise Absolutely. God. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's get that next generation to, to rise up and make a difference in those spaces. Mm -hmm. so, um, Absolutely. All right, can, I, can we do lightning round? I didn't, I didn't warn you on this one ahead of time. Lightning round is one, I'm going to give you one word. Okay. And, uh, and then you have to, you have to give your, your interpretation, your understanding, your insight about that one word in, in two words. <laughs> I was going to give you like three or four words, but like. So I, but yeah, so, but just a real tight, cause these are some, these are some words that maybe uh, get talked about. So let me go, let's go ahead and start with the obvious one. This is actually three words, but uh, New Year's, New Year's resolutions. Like, like what comes to mind if you had just a couple, three, four things, who's, who's the fast thinkers here? All right, Pastor Bob, you're, you're, you're fast. New Year's, what comes to mind when I say New Year's resolutions? Something you'll definitely quit doing after a while. <laughs> That's good. Come on. That's good. Come on. All right. Good. It, it really doesn't register with me. I'm not. New, you're not a New Year's resolution guy? Yeah, no. You know? Because that's tomorrow. So. No, I was a farmer. We just didn't think about things. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, New Year's resolution. Anything come to the, mind? To me, the things that we decide in our hearts mm -hmm. are essential. As a man, 
purposes in his heart. Yeah. That, that's defining us. Good. And uh, there are things that, like we say, I will follow the Lord. That's a decision of the heart. The, the desire of the forces I will try to make you do something other than that. Yeah. But you see, to me, there's one thing that matters. You see, okay, Aunt Corley is not here, but <laughs> she and her husband, Don, invited me to speak at the ranch at the because they conducted the Christian Cowboy Association, yeah, yeah, yeah. and everybody sat in that barn on on straw, uh, yeah, hay bales, hay yeah. bales, yeah. yeah, and uh, and they said, "No, we have something to say." And of course, I'm a foreigner and have an accent and all that, and talking <laughs> to a bunch of cowboys, and yet I have seen the movie uh, called uh, City Slickers. The movie <laughs> City Slickers. It's an interesting movie because pastor has been talking about intergenerational communication. Mm -hmm. And you see, those city slickers were rather youngish, yeah. uh, businessmen. But there was an old cowboy, Jack Palance, who was called Curly. <laughs> Curly sat there and observed everybody. And, uh, and he was he's sitting there, uh, and Billy Crystal, who was one of the businessmen, uh, was there and he was asking, he says, well, can you tell us, Curly, what is important mm -hmm. in life? And Curly said, there's one thing that matters in life. And what is it? That's for you to find out. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and the interesting thing is this, what moved, that moved me to, to the Good. end of one chapter point. 10, 40, verse 41, 42 of Luke. Because you see, Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to him, taking in everything. And Martha was running around like a chicken with her head cut off. And says, Lord, tell her to help me. <laughs> and Jesus says to her, Martha, Martha, you're busy about and." Moved by too many things, but one thing is important. Mm -hmm. And Mary chose that go. good part. Yeah. To me, that message, see, we have lessons. Good. Sometimes, like Pastor was saying and Pastor Bob was saying, not everything that comes out, comes into your ears, is bad. Mm -hmm. So that's why what comes is the end of First Thessalonians chapter 5 says, Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. And that's where we really get to learn. Yeah. Good. It wasn't lightning round, but it was really, really good insight. I love that story. Tina, anything? Yeah, anything? I can say yeah. in just a very few words, my New Year's resolution, which I have just decided on, is I want to be refreshing to everyone I meet. There you go. <laughs> so, you are. I love it. She said, uh, I want to be refreshing to everyone she meets like that's oh, her that's new good. year yeah, yeah that's good, good so let me we'll make it a, a little more uh, a little, little more biblical in, in terminology here repentance the word repentance a um, couple three four words that come to mind on that unpack that about it mr fraley well what comes to mind is there obviously we're not always going to do everything right so repentance is being honest in your heart to change when you realize there's something that you maybe you're doing or you're taking a stand on, good, or you're you know you're you're critical, yeah, somebody, yeah. and you shouldn't be, right, and you change, you let your heart be changed, and God will do it. Good. God is faithful; He'll do it. Mm -hmm. Good repentance, Bob. It's one of the great reliefs of life. Yes, that's good. Whoa. It is. Wow. Whoa. That's good. All right, I got to pause on that one. Very good. Un unpack that just a little more too. There's nothing worse than carrying a burden on your heart that is dragging you down. Yeah. And once you repent of it, mm. the relief is so amazing. Mm. Yes, it is. Come on. Come on, JT. That's it. Good. You want to add anything? Yeah. Sure, Repentance. sure. Repentance. Uh, Come into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. When you repent, 
and you do that, you take your eyes off yourself, like you say, it's a great relief. It's Good. a great relief. It's a new start. Wow. It's a new beginning. Love that. <laughs> Anything else? Anything. When you reach that point, when you confess and depart, you will receive mercy, says in the Proverbs. You see, one important thing is that when we are moved by something that we realize we have done wrong, sometimes we can spend a lifetime punishing ourselves. But he who confesses and departs mm. Good. receives mercy. Mm -hmm. So that's what the Lord gives us. And to me, is like Pastor Bob was saying, that's why I sit with him as much as I can and, and pick his brain because he has Good. the mind of Christ. And uh, to me, it's such a blessing to realize that you can be refreshed mm -hmm. even after you've done something wrong. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me uh, grab the last two words and then we're going to share communion. Um, the word disciplines. So we, we talk about disciplines. Um, and you potentially, you all have different ones in your own life at different times. Disciplines, like, how's that? How do you see those? Well, there's been confusion, I think, in the church for many years over the difference between discipline and ritual. Discipline versus ritual. Yes. Okay. It's very important that a person have a disciplined life. Okay. But we've heard so much about don't get caught up in ritual mm -hmm. that we're almost afraid to discipline our lives. <laughs> yeah. So true. And yet yes. it is so important Good. that we set measurements in our life as to whether we're gaining ground or we're losing ground. Yeah. And that comes by knowing where you want to go and how to get there. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Anybody else want to add to that one? Yeah. Well, the one phrase that's not been brought out, I don't think, and which is, I've been doing a lot of research on in the scripture, and it is so full of it. <clears throat> and that's our sinful nature. Mm. And the Bible is very strong on that. We're born with it. We didn't have a choice. And at times, it's going to affect us. It's going to cause us to not be too wise. But don't let the guilt take over on that, which is what you're saying. That doesn't keep us from constantly trying to be disciplined in controlling who we are. And we've got the Holy Spirit to give us the right direction over our sinful nature. But Absolutely. at times we let it take over. But it's there, folks. Yeah. And we don't want to try to hide it. Actually, it is a part of how you understand deception. The enemy tries to deceive us through our sinful nature. He did it to Eve. It started in the scripture at the beginning, and it's still going on. Good. Anyway, so. Um, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Good. Add and perhaps that. that's the difference, Bob, is the fact that ritual is something you do. Yeah. Discipline True. is comes from the Holy Spirit and directs you. Wow. There you go. Yeah, so I, everything, so what I'm, I'm just hearing on that is you're looking to the new year and establishing some patterns like, you, I think the first comments when you're introducing yourself, do everything in prayer. Start everything in prayer. Like, that's, that's, the, um, that's the foundation of it. Last one, and it leads us in. We're going to share communion together. We're just going to sit here and just have communion. Because, like, this, has this been sweet? Like, has this, anybody been blessed with this? Uh, yeah. So, um, I know I have. I know I have. Um, so we're just, we're just doing family today, and we're starting in New Year. We're, we're kind of gleaning. There's, there's another word called consecration. Called oh, what? Consecration. Is that in the dictionary? It, it's, it's in the, 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 the thing called the Bible. You know. okay. We consecrate ourselves. You know, we see it Old Testament, and, and we see it lived out, implied in, in new. Um, we consecrate ourselves. Like, like how, do you, how, do you, how, would, how do you help somebody? Norbert, I'll, I'll start with you on this. How do you help somebody understand the word consecrate? Um, 
It's not a, not a common word that we use here, um, but super important in our spiritual journey. Yes, and uh, when I was 19 years old, there came a, I was in Buenos Aires, he was an American missionary, and uh, he led a service on the subject of consecration. Mm. And the truth is, I was 19, I was in school, I was a good Christian boy following all that I knew, but I realized I was kind of getting a little cold. So this missionary was praying there at the church uh, in fasting before speaking to us. And then he started speaking, and then he spoke on something about Abraham dedicating his son Isaac, offering his son Isaac at God's request. And something happened. And something happened when this man spoke about this. And something happened to me when Pastor Bob, a couple of years ago, spoke also about the trip Abraham made with Isaac to offer him in sacrifice. And how those nights, three days and three nights on the way, I never forgot because it moved me. Because that was consecrating the thing he loved the most to God. And what I never forget is this. I was standing there, and as this man of God was speaking about consecration and dedication to the Lord of the things we love the most, he says, will those who, and something in our church was not done. There was no such thing as altar calls, after calls back then. But he said, those who want to consecrate their lives to God, come to the front. I ran. I ran to the front. And then I turned my head, and the whole church had come to the front. I never forget it, because uh. that's, in the end, what the Lord says, give me, my son, your heart. And that is the heart of consecration, in my understanding. Says it. Beautiful. The ushers are going to serve you, and we're going to go to the table of the Lord today, and uh, I think we'll just, we're going to sit with that as, as our thought as we present ourselves. Um, let's just prepare our heart, Esther, just let you lead us for a few minutes, and let's just uh, bow our hearts. We're presenting, we're going to enjoy fellowship with the Lord. That's why we call it the Lord's Table. Um, just worship and sit in prayer for just a couple minutes here, and then we'll take the elements together in just a minute. Just blessing the elements. Go over your mic there. Just bless the elements. Just give thanks for a moment as we before we receive today. 
Lord, we thank you so much for what you have done for us. My goodness, come to earth, love us, teach us, sacrifice yourself for us. We don't know how to say thank you more than thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Yeah. As we take these elements, we remember, remember that you said, do this in remembrance of me, and that's what we do. We thank you, Lord, so, so much for all you've done. Amen. Today we receive the elements and we close out 2023. We're doing this together in community. The body of Christ. Receiving the body of Christ. The elements. Saying goodbye to yesterday. Repentance. Saying hello to the new possibilities of what God's doing because you're a free people because of Jesus. Unto thee, Lord, you gave yourself so that we could have life. Thank you for your body. Likewise, the cup. The new wine established, the new covenant established through the blood of our Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. Another statement has said that your sins would be whiter than snow because of the blood of our Savior. And so all the free people in the house say amen. amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Unto thee, Lord, we're grateful. In Jesus' name. Well, you get uh, 30 seconds, last, last final word, big wisdom, like sitting here, final big ending. You got other than go, let's go to lunch. You have, you have one other last, final thoughts for us to head out. So. The greatest of all is the strength that comes from the joy of the Lord, Amen. walking in his presence. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful. Bob, grab, grab your mic there. One final big word here. Come on. You're hot. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> Jesus' words about the time which we're now living is even the elect or Christians will be deceived. Mm. Let that ring in your mind and how you live out each day because it's all around us, folks. Amen. Amen. Tina? Yeah. The word of the Lord says, let your light so shine so that the, the world will see. We'll see. Well, what's he talking about? One thing he's talking about is joy. Everybody needs to see joy. It's so refreshing. So let the joy of the Lord invigorate you this coming year. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I, Tina's dad, always in preaching, writing, and in personal conversation said something precisely about joy. So she's her daughter, the, the apple of her daddy's eye, which I was so fortunate to be able to marry. And uh, he always said, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And the reason I see behind it all is that when the Holy Spirit fell upon the 120, they were so filled with joy that 1,200 people came to the Lord. 3,000, I'm sorry, three, the 120, 3,000 people came to the Lord in yep. one day. Why? Because they had joy. And everybody wants joy. Everybody needs joy. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Can you stand uh, and give these amazing oh. men and women of the Lord a big blessing today? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Nora, Tina. Zach, why don't you help uh, or Todd? There we go. Well, it is uh, our joy. Happy New Year. 
uh, going into it. I get to be the, the first one. I think somewhere in Australia probably has already, um, already had it. So next Sunday, we'll be gathering back here. Uh, a message that the Lord's had on my heart around the, the story of Josiah called the Divine Reset. Divine Reset. And um, I'm anticipating a powerful day in the Lord next Sunday. So in the meantime, uh, we bless you. Be blessed and be a blessing. To God be all the glory in his church forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Bob.